Excuse me, the log. Hi, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking an over the top beautiful midsummer day here. In late October, we are barefoot and t shirted again here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York, baby. Here on it is 77 degrees record breaking temperatures up here in the Finger Lakes on Friday October 27th 2023 so guys I know this is gonna break your heart right understand this is going to break your heart but I just cannot muster a manga bay Roundup ecological meltdown roundup rant. It's just it, it, it's <coughs> I don't know. I, I, I just don't have it in me as much as I would uh, like to share Rhett Butler's weekly cavalcade of catastrophe the death by a million cuts going on on this planet but uh you can go over to mongabay.com anytime and read the headlines yourself so i'm just gonna sit here and play around on medium.com we're gonna I, 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 I don't know it's just maybe the old uh editor in me you know, you need to be real careful when you're a, a writer yourself on medium.com and you start uh, critiquing, which is a soft word of criticizing other writers' works because I realize I'm setting myself up. I'm hoping to start writing a lot more for Medium once I get some time off in Florida here two more days in New York baby but uh, I, I I just have to before we get into medium.com we uh, I, I have to get into my uh, favorite doomer writer uh, who does not write for medium.com unfortunately so I just have to do uh, I, I, I guess I'm just, uh, what does that make me? Who do you write for, Andy the Gardener? So, Andy, so I, I, I did that piece on Jessica Wildfire's uh, newest rant, not in Medium.com. You know, Jessica left Medium.com recently and took her, she had like 125,000 followers, headed over, made her own little corner of the internet called OK Doomer. Uh, you know, a play on OK Boomer. OK Doomer. And apparently, Andy the Gardener was not one of Jessica's fans because I guess Andy had never heard of Jessica. So, this was uh, Andy the Gardener's response to my critique of... Uh, my critique of Jessica Wildfire's new column about basically about the depopulation agenda of the uh, and I am using the word New World Order. She is she used the word elites and I guess Andy the Gardener was a little confused so he had this is Andy the Gardener's uh, spin on uh, the depopulation agenda, I guess. Take it away, Andy the Gardener. I'm going to soften the F-bomb just a little bit here. Take it away, Andy the Gardener. Who the hell is Jessica Wildfire? You don't have to do a lengthy debunking on these intellectual minnows and pipsqueaks and that pretty much covers all humans. I remember once I asked you what, you what you thought of Jordan Peterson. Your succinct reply pretty much nailed it. That jackass? Nuff said. 
just been watching a, I've just been watching a Paul Beckwith vid. He was bemoaning some fairy tale city being wiped out by a big storm. Not sure where. Could be Timbuktu or some other unlikely sounding place I saw in a book or in a film for all I care or for all that matters. It will be a fairy tale place soon enough. What's the point of bemoaning the death of people that are A, not legitimate, and B, causing huge destruction, and C, including that which leads to their own inevitable downfall, <clears throat> seems illogical. Either a shrug or a celebration seems more appropriate. I am more inclined to shrug rather than laugh when hearing tales of woe befalling soon-to-be mythic places that should not exist and therefore won't soon. But that's just me. I care about as much as the folks in Acapulco as I do for the folks in Narnia or some dinosaurs that got wiped out in a flood once. They are not real people and endlessly disappointing. Even those close to being your heroes disappoint. Some rare good news landing on their plate and they don't see it. <laughs> so that is Andy. My response to Andy the gardener uh, asking who the hell Jessica Wildfire is. <clears throat> Jessica Wildfire is or was the darling of the doomosphere over at medium.com until she left a few weeks ago with 125,000 subscribers, including me, to start her own web page called OK Doomer. She is not quite in St. Greta's League in terms of limp dick lefty hero worship, but she has many thousands of fans who assumedly identify as doomers, at least until one of the pipsqueaks of the apocalypse make a futile attempt to call the number of humans. Then these doomers go absolute batshit and start screaming about depopulation agendas by the New World Order. The next day, they are right back screaming about ecological overshoot and worshiping William Catton. These doomers are a dime a dozen, so I don't need to start calling out names. And uh, I would like to share several of the private uh, email comments I have gotten from some well-known doomers about Jessica Wildfire's late, <laughs> latest essay. They, they did not want to go public on their comments. Uh, I won't do that. Uh, but apparently... Uh, Jessica's latest uh, rant is not impressing some doomers. What do I have? I think 35 thumbs up and one thumbs down. But anyway, speaking of writers who I am not going to name, this is a fellow who I had never, whose name I had never heard. And so I'm, I, I'm not going, my, my intention is, is not to embarrass this uh, person at all. It's, it's just simply to point out, I'm going to read a, a passage from this person's rant today, and then we're going to compare it to another rant. So the name of this one was Our Global Endgame. Our Global Endgame by a writer I had never heard of before. And I said, okay, this could be good. And so I start into it, and this is, he has a one-sentence lead-in, 
and we are going to read, I'm going to read three paragraphs from our global endgame. <clears throat> Civilizations are not a complex of stories, institutions, and artifacts. They are biophysical, dynamically complex societies that range from viably complex to over-complex as characterized by degrees of pathology related to population over-density all the way up to lethal over-complexity, e.g. all modern cities. I use Joseph Tainter's complex society as in collapse of as being synonymous with civilization, aka empire, to avoid the positive or negative connotations most people associate with civilization, but fighting to re-image the concept of civilization as a viable condition is to consider so as to displace the non-viable images that prevail. <clears throat> Are you following this? So now we get to a 74-word sentence. Imagine if you were in Miss Rexford's eighth grade English class and she told you to go up and diagram this sentence. This is one sentence. A pathologically overcomplex society, civilization selects for increasing levels of dysfunction over typically a period of eight to twenty generations of living in an overcomplex society. So lethal does not imply a sudden death, but a non-viable dynamic that selects for the overcomplex society's dissolution with all due feedback delays, e.g., all prior overcomplex societies, thousands of chiefdoms to city-states and over a hundred state-level overcomplex societies over the last 12,000 years. That was one sentence. We're going to read one more paragraph, which he actually breaks up into three sentences, just in case you are trying to figure out what this is all about. A viable complex society, civilization, would, given human biological norms and limits, average about 28 largely self-sufficient communities of, uh, on average, 28 citizens range 5 to 85, typically 20 to 30 each. Larger groups and numbers of frequently interacting groups selects for psychosocial pathologies and transitions to the overcomplexity spectrum that selects for denormalizing of individuals, e.g. modern techno-industrial society. To be ever more civilized is to be more dysfunctional into disillusion just to summarize the last 50,000 years of expansion as humans and their culture form of civilization. This goes on and on and on. So I noticed there are two comments to this. Th this dude, uh, Tennessee Jed. Jed, you get around, brother. So anyway... That uh, story had 50 thumbs up, and one of those probably came from my buddy Tennessee Jed. Apparently, we are going to run into calamity as the invisible hand is working the controls. Thank you for your astute, astute, albeit disturbing observations. And then we hear from Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles, the at least former editor. <clears throat> this essay could have been truly great if the writer was not so intent on impressing himself with his knowledge and use of 50 cent words. My granny, what big words you have! You know, it, I remember when, you know, when I was an editor for years and, and this kind of crap would, would come across my desk 
Uh, you, you, you know, these people, uh, you, you, you know, maybe if you're some sort of, you know what I'm saying, have a PhD in whatever you need a PhD in to be able to talk about this subject, uh, you know, and you're writing uh, for some sort of obtuse, uh, you know, professional scientific journal or, or whatever, uh, but if you're writing for the popular press, if you're writing for medium.com, who the hell do you think you're communicating with? And uh, I will make one exception to the big words. I, I, I heard another Doomer mentioning this story uh, talking about Terrence McKenna. Who, uh, who uses a lot of 75 cent words. I, I would love to, uh, you know, to diagram a Terrence McKenna rant and someone once asked him, you, you, you know, why haven't you gotten yourself in more trouble with the normies, with, with all of your outrageous ideas about uh, modern culture in the American empire? And his answer was, I use big words. I use big words, and the normies have no clue what I'm talking about. Uh, that, so, you know, who is this guy talking to? I, 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 anyway, I won't embarrass. So compare that uh, to this one. And I will uh, give Richard Lowenthal a uh, thumbs up. This is his rant right next to this other fellow's called, Is Our Whole Society Going Crazy? Yep. Uh, let's get one thing straight right off the bat. The sheer volume and intensity of all the crazy shit happening around us in our society and around the world is not normal. And but we're just got we're gonna slide down. This is a uh, which one do I? Okay, we're just going to read the section. I'm I'm just throwing a dart here. Americans are refusing to deal with reality. But now let's return to my original theme, the increasing prevalence of highly abnormal events and trends. In my view, accepting all these bizarre occurrences as the new normal shows conclusively that Americans are refusing to deal with reality and are basically giving up on any real solutions or social improvements. We are accepting an increasingly insane and abhorrent situation and twisting ourselves into moral pretzels trying desperately to make this all okay. But guess what? No amount of twisting and pretzel-like adapting will make all of this crap okay because deep inside we all know it's not okay. It just isn't. Not by a long shot. So a large part of our mounting stress, fear, and craziness is directly due to the huge internal contradictions and massive cognitive dissonance that build up around and within all this frantic avoidance and denial. Such high levels of denial and avoidance end up making us crazy both literally and practically, they make us unsane and paralyzed and unable to function or respond adequately to adverse events or stimuli. And sometimes people just crack under the strain and end up making death threats, attacking others, or going on shooting sprees. Uh, okay, do, do, does anybody see the difference uh, or, or, or am I the only one, uh, just a little bit more, we can tick off all kinds of reasons, of course, but I'd say the crucial dynamic that's playing it out now involves two interlocking patterns. 
first our complete immersion in our comfort-based consumerist lifestyles and second our tendency to avoid any discomfort and latch on to fairy tale mainly right wing unless you're Jessica Wildfire explanations for why things aren't really that bad since climate change is a hoax and America is on its way to becoming great again. There you go. Thank you, Richard Lowenthal and Andy the Gardener for restoring my faith uh, in good Doomer writing after surviving uh, that wild whatever that was yesterday from Jessica Wildfire and, and whatever that impenetrable crap was uh, by this writer who shall remain nameless. Uh, but anyway, guys, I'm sure I have a lot of room to talk. You can go on to medium.com and and uh, look up the few articles I've written. I mostly do Doomer uh, song parodies, and uh, I think I have my biggest article was called In Praise of Naked Women, I think is my biggest uh, <laughs> blockbuster on medium.com. So anyway, uh, maybe I will get around to some more medium.com stuff, but I'm not promising it's all going to be Doomer stuff, although uh, I can't think anything more Doomer than naked women, but that's another rant for another day and another channel. Right now, you're all Doomer media critic uh, has to wrap this up and get ready for my final my final guest checking in uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm vacation rentals uh, one more weekend and I am out of here either on Sunday or Monday at the latest so I guess I'll have time for a Chronicle of the Collapse tomorrow before I head out. Oh, get out and enjoy this springtime weather in New York, baby, because the snow will be flying on November 1st when I will be probably booking across Virginia. Bye, guys. Okay, little dog, you did not have to survive a Manga Bay Roundup rant.